In this video, we're going to use the starter project and show how to enable CloudKit abilities in that project. If you haven't already done so, unzip the starter project and open it in Xcode. When you open up the Xcode project, the most important thing to do first is to give it a unique bundle identifier. How would you explain a bundle identifier, Dale? The bundle identifier is usually comprised of a reverse domain name followed by a dot and the name of the application. Uh, for our app, let's call it online.techinnovator.expenses. If you're at, say, the University of Missouri, you could put edu.missouri.yourpawprint.expenses, but you need to make sure that the identifier is unique because when we create a CloudKit entitlement and a will, cloud, CloudKit container, it will use this bundle identifier and there is a separate container created for each one and to avoid collisions and conflict, these bundle identifiers for each person need to be unique. So we can't stress this enough, give it a unique bundle identifier that you know is unique to yourself and nobody else. The next step is to go down to the second section in this uh, project editing state and change the team to a team that you are an admin on. For example, we have admin access to the University of Missouri team, so we're gonna select that. It is absolutely imperative that you choose a team that you are admin on, else you will not be able to add the CloudKit capability to this project. So the next step then is to enable the capabilities? Exactly, so na navigate to the capabilities tab and the very first thing that you're gonna see is iCloud. Go on to the right hand side and click the toggle from off to on. And notice the second that you do that, a few things happen. The very first thing on the project navigator on the left hand side is we get the expenses entitlement file. This was created automatically for us and gives us the entitlements to actually interact with CloudKit in this project. The next things that you might see is at the bottom of the iCloud section, we have four steps with check marks next to it. These occur because it's, Xcode's actually doing multitude of different steps when we enable this, and this is saying everything works out. If you get an error here, it probably means that you're A, not an admin on the team, or you have not actually added a team to your project yet. So once you have actually done that, you have all the check marks. There is one other thing we need to do here, and that is enable CloudKit. So toggle this toggle box, and the container section becomes enabled that we can actually change values in it. We are going to leave it as using the default container, and when we're using the default container, we have it based on our bundle identifier, and that is why the bundle identifier absolutely has to be unique. And just to show uh, that this is the case, if we were to set this to the personal account for which we do not have uh, administrative privileges, we see that we don't have sufficient privileges here. If we go to capabilities, we see that um, iCloud is, is now missing because we don't have the ability to access iCloud. In fact, we have a lot fewer capabilities listed here than we had before. Now I'm gonna change it back. Here I have administrative privileges on the University of Missouri team, and now we have these capabilities again. You do not actually need to be part of a business or a university program to do this. You can also have a paid developer account, and if, as long as you select that team, you'll have all those capabilities as well.